The Wall Street Journal op-ed, President Joe Biden writes, in his words, our economic recovery has been the strongest of any uh, major economy. My goal now is to protect and build on this progress. Join us now to talk about the Biden economy. Former White House Chief of Staff to President uh, Biden, Ron Klain. He's been he's done things for President Obama as well. And I bet these guys know each other. Former Trump White House Chief of Staff, Nick Mulvaney. He's the co-chair of Actum Strategic Advisors. Did you guys work together? Could you... Ron, could you have Thanksgiving dinner with Mick, and, and uh, would that go would that go off okay? Would that make it to the pumpkin pie? You think? Uh, I th I think it would. I don't know if uh, I don't know what Mick's plans are for Thanksgiving, but uh, but welcome. he and I have always had a good relationship. He's always welcome, and uh, we were having a nice chat before we came on. Excellent, Joe. We had we had breakfast together. We're in the same building, but different uh, different studios. So yeah, we had we had a sort of breakfast. That's halfway to Thanksgiving, right? Exactly. Perfect. So so let's try and figure this out. And, and Ron. You know, I understand politics. I understand how things work. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, economy. Obviously, we've we've had some inflation issues that that people can point to different things yeah. for what caused it. And the president does have uh, definitely some things that that he can talk about. But my my only point when, when Ron when he talks about reducing the deficit, and we know that it was post pandemic and it was going to come down because of that we were spending this, you know his people and, and the president says that again and again and again and most people say you know we understand why that happened it it really hasn't been reduced that much the 13 million jobs that he talks about it took till january till we got back to where we were before the pandemic so both of those things on face value are true but we can see that he doesn't need to sort of use those techniques to make things look better well, I agree. He, you know, the record speaks for itself in many ways, uh, not just the 13 million jobs, which some of which was recovering lost jobs. But right. let's be honest, uh, we have the lowest unemployment rate we've had in, a, in 50 years in this country. We've had 16 months of the unemployment rate below 4 percent. We have the lowest black unemployment rate ever in the United States, the highest female labor force participation ever in the United States, Hispanic unemployment nearing a low, real incomes up. Those are hard numbers. That's not just recovering things we lost. That's actually historic gains in the economy. And you were just talking a few minutes ago about the recession in Europe. While they're, while they're in a recession in Europe, we are adding jobs here in America. I just read an article about the deindustrialization of Germany. We're adding manufacturing jobs here in America. So, you know, even compared to our peer countries, uh, the yeah. American economy is showing a lot of strength. That's undeniable, uh, Mick. But uh, a lot of those trends that we saw were we're happening under the indicted guy, uh, under the former uh, president, uh, the, the gentleman you worked for, Mick. A lot of those numbers, uh, the, you know, Hispanic uh, employment, uh, overall employment, um, the, the wage gains, those were in place until the pandemic hit. Yeah, in fact, I listened to, uh, to Ron read that, and I think I wrote that back in about 2019 because we were saying the exact same thing. Look, they, they've had a really good run. The, the jobs numbers have been great. I pay less attention to the unemployment rate because it's a quotient, right? You got to deal with labor participation, people looking for work, but the numbers are great. Anytime you have a month over 250,000 jobs, it's a healthy economy. And I think they've been there every month, but one or two. I guess my question to Ron, my question to the administration, my question to you is, if things are so good, if they're as good as Biden says they are in this piece in the Wall Street Journal, why are his numbers so low? Is it possible that what we see in Washington is not what people are seeing back home, that people back home care more about inflation uh, than we realize, that they don't believe that green energy subsidies help them. You know, they're not going to go out and buy a Polestar for $75,000. Is it possible they like their gas stoves? Is it possible that this administration, like so many folks in Washington, are just detached from what's happening in the real world? Because the numbers, yep. the approval ratings for the, for, the, for the president now just don't match where the economy is, you know, per his, uh, his layout in the Wall Street Journal. Oh, man, Ron, I think Thanksgiving is off. I, I don't know. After, after <laughs> I think, that, no, after, Mick, Mick's after always after welcome. Mick, Mick is always welcome. But I will say this. Uh, look, I think, I think Mick raises some fair questions here. The voters don't feel it in the economy, and I think there are a lot of reasons for that. One, even though inflation is coming down, prices do hit people. And the administration has done a, a lot of hard work to bring inflation down, to unkink the supply chains and to get things going. You had a guest, two guests ago who talked about you couldn't find a car a couple years ago to buy. Now we've got the auto companies making cars and that's increasing the supply of cars. It's hopefully going to bring down the price of cars. That's the thing that really hits consumers hard. Uh, we know that groceries hit consumer hard. And again, the administration has been working hard to bring down the price of groceries, <coughs> deal with competition in the, in the industry. I think everyone in the White House knows that uh, voters uh, measure the success of the economy by their own pocketbook, not by these macro statistics. 
and they need they still have work to do. They've made a lot of progress from what we inherited, but there's still work to do. Hey, Ron, I, I, I want to ask you this, and and because uh, you've been very frank, and I, and I appreciate that. There, the inflation that we talk about, all right, we know that we reopened, all right, we know about the supply chain, we know about uh, what the president called the Putin price hikes, but there is a uh, there is something to the notion that when you spend that much, maybe it was smart initially with the pandemic, but when you spend that much, you're going to uh, you're, you're going to maybe instill some inflation that's hard that's hard to uh, to get out of the system. There was quite a bit of spending in terms of the Chips Act, the IRA, the Infrastructure Act. We're at uh, the highest levels since World War II in terms of debt to GDP. Would you? If you were still chief of staff, would you be pushing more legislation, more spending, uh, even though we're at $32 trillion in terms of, of total debt? you still think that's a good idea, or would, would you take a step I, I back? Think, well, look, I think I wouldn't take a step back. I think the investments that the president and the Congress decided to make in 2022 are wise investments that are productive, that will add to the productivity of our economy for years and years to come. I think the Chips and Science Act, which will help build chip fabs all over this country, are going to create six-figure jobs for people in left behind and forgotten parts of the country. I just read an article about the, the, uh, the electric battery belt in the southern part of the country where we're creating high-tech manufacturing jobs in places that have been left behind before. I yeah. think that's no, healthy. I think this none is None of the build inflation up. was from the overspent. You don't think it was a binge, Ron, at all? You don't think I that, don't think that, it was a binge. Look, I think, again, you look at what, where we are in a, as an economy versus where Europe is, uh, Europe right. has higher inflation and worse economic growth. So I'd rather take, I would take the U.S. economy over the European economy any day of the week. Well, they, and they, I think they that, rushed the green transition quicker than we did, uh, Ron, and, and, and that, that's, that's got something to do with, with their But I also issue. say we're going to produce more oil this year in America than any year Donald well, Trump was president.